there, stamping friends. It's Jackie Ballheis from Comp and Stampers. Are you ready to make a quick and easy fun fold card? It's been a while since I've done a fun fold. And this one is super easy and the ideas are endless. We're gonna use the plentiful plant stamp set, but I hope you kind of look at the fun fold more as an idea that you can use with any stamps that you have. So that's kind of what I always try to keep in mind when I'm creating cards that maybe you don't have the products I use, but hopefully you can use the idea. And if you don't have the products and you'd like them, by all means, I would love to be your Stampin' Up! demonstrator and have you order them through me. So thank you for those of you that are tuning in. If you watch me regularly, I so appreciate you guys. And I love hearing from you and I love your comments. If this is the first time you found one of my videos, welcome. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you share it with your friends and that you subscribe. I try to share quick and easy card making ideas usually twice a week. Now speaking of Stampin' Up! If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be that person. And guess what? Right now during August and September, it's celebration. That means with any purchase you make that's at least $50, you get to select free items from Stampin' Up! And it's also the best time to join Stampin' Up! and the Clompin' Stampers. Come join my team. I'd love to have you. Whether you're looking to build a business or you're just a hobby stamper, we love to have all of you. We do so much as a team, most of it virtually so that we can, you know, accommodate everybody. And most of it's really geared towards those of you that are hobby stampers. It is one of the best ways to get the most ideas, have fun with a fun community of stampers and participate in some fun virtual events. I'd love to have you. If you'd like some more information or like to chat about it, reach out to me. Now, that's enough chit chat. I'm ready to flip this camera down and let's get making our fun fold. Hold on. As I mentioned, the stamp set we're using is Plentiful Plants. This actually is a bundle. There's coordinating dies with it. I've, had, I've shared several other projects with it already. Now, if you want to see those on my website, and I'll have a link down in the description of this video, it'll take you to the blog post for today, but it'll also kind of guide you to see some of the other projects that I've done with it. Now, we've got a lot of parts and pieces to this card, and I have them all pre-cut. And I'll have pictures of um, both the card I'm making as well as all these cutting measurements for you on my website as well. Just follow that link and it'll take you to it. So that way you can just kind of sit back and watch how I make this easy card. And then if you'd like to make it too, go grab the measurements over there. So like I said, lots of parts and pieces. Now I think this card is actually called a Dutch door or a double Dutch door card. I, you know, I don't get all wrapped up always in, in official names, I guess, of fun folds. And I think sometimes people call them different things. So we're just calling it a fun fold. Now, our first piece here is actually four and an eighth by eight and three quarters. And we are gonna go ahead and score it at five and a half. Now I do have both my cutting and scoring blade on here, so I gotta make sure we use the scoring one, which is the lighter one. And I like to go back and forth a few times. So there is that part. So we're just kind of making the card base. So we need this piece, and then we also need this strip here. And this is eight and a half by two and a quarter, and we're going to score it at two and an eighth from each side. So two and an eighth in this way, two and an eighth in that way. Now, I use a lot of eighths, and this card's using a lot of them. So I just want to show you, and we're going to zoom the camera in here. I know some people struggle, and your cutter might be a little different. Let me move this down, make sure we're in the view of the camera there. You'll see my two right here, and then there's the three. So in the middle is our two and a half, and then there's these little longer lines here that's our quarters. So we have two and a quarter, two and a half, two and three quarters. Then in between, I have three lines. So the bigger of those in between lines is our eighth mark. This one actually does sixteenths as well, which I never cut stuff at sixteenths, but I do use the eighth a lot. So it's the two plus actually two little lines right there to get to that two eighth. Okay, so what, what did we say here? Two and an eighth, so we're gonna put it right there. And we're gonna score on that. And then we're gonna go ahead and flip it around and we're going to do two and an eighth over on this other side. And I think that's all the cutting and scoring. So we can set that aside. And then I, even when I score, I like to use my bone folder. And we're gonna go ahead and get that nice crisp fold right there. Same with this one. 
So there's that part. And then let's do this one as well. So here is the base of our card. Next, we're going to grab some de designer series paper that I already cut. And let's just glue this on so we can then kind of set the... Um, glue's got to get started here. We can set these pieces aside while we do our stamping. So we're going to take this piece. And again, let's see. Measurements, I think, on this one are four by three and an eighth. Um, double check on my website. So there's that one. And then on this piece, we have two little pieces that are two by two and an eighth. So again, lots of ace. I played around with kind of some different measurements trying to make this card work the easiest for you. And you know what happens when you take cardstock and you score and fold, you lose a little bit of its size. And that's why we had to, had to get those ace in there to make this work. Okay, so there is that part. And what we're gonna do, and this is kind of making that card base, is this is going to be adhered right behind it. So our card will actually open like this. This piece will come up and these will open. So why don't we do that right now? And then we have the whole base of the card done. So we got our adhesive in there. We're gonna stick that in the middle and just kind of center it left to right between those fold lines, get it nice and even with the bottom and we'll stick it on like so. So there we go. Let's set that aside. And the next thing we're gonna do is some stamping. We're going to start with our basic white here that's two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths, and we are going to stamp a plant from that plentiful plant. So let's start by making our pot. Like I said, there are dyes that go along with this, but we're not using the dyes today. We're going to just do some basic stamping. So we've got the cinnamon, and then we're going to use soft succulent. I'm really, really, really liking these colors. So there's our soft succulent, and then we're going to use the evening evergreen. And we're gonna just stamp this right on top of there so it's kind of coming down and flowing out of that plant. So there is our stamped piece, and I have a piece of that evening evergreen, if I can grab it over here. And we're gonna just go ahead and layer that. Oops, there's my little cheat sheet with some of my measurements. So, Wanted to make sure I scored it right for you. That would be bad if I would have scored it wrong. Okay, so there's that piece. And then I also have a piece for the inside. And for this one, we're gonna grab our basic black, well, basic black, um, our cardstock's basic black. We're gonna use Memento black. Um, and I am going to stamp in the inside. You were, you were there and I'm very grateful. So let's go back to our card and then we have one more greeting to add and we're actually gonna do some embossing. But I thought I'd get this part done and then I'll kind of slide some of this stuff out of the, the way to make sure we have room. So inside we have a normal inside of a card, four by five and a quarter. We'll just get that on there. Okay, remember it's holding up now. Whoops, I bent it, there we go. And then let's grab some dimensionals. Now you wanna be a little careful here because this is going to go, you know, kind of in the center, but we wanna make sure it's only adhered on the top here. So what I'm gonna do is just put three dimensionals across the top. We'll go and then down a little bit to hold it on there. We wanna make sure we're, we're not sticking our card closed. So let's peel those off. And then close this up and we'll kind of go, you know, center it left to right. You know, there's really no magic spot. So there is the most of our card. The last thing I want to do is add a greeting onto the front. So we're going to do some heat embossing, but I want to just move these stamp pads. So hang on a sec. A lot of time when I do heat embossing, I'll pre-do it for the video. I don't always show it, but every once in a while, it's like, oh, time to show it just to remind you or show those of you that are new. Heat embossing is really simple. One of my favorite things to do is use white embossing powder on black cardstock. Now, part of it will depend on the part of the country you are and, you know, how much humidity is there in the air, or how oily your hands are and how much you've cut, um, touched the cardstock. But what we want to prevent is specks of the embossing powder sticking where we don't want it. Now, I have a little thing here called an embossing buddy. 
and I just kind of rub it on there. And essentially, it takes the static off that cardstock. Sadly, Stampin' Up! doesn't carry these anymore. Um, I believe you can find them online someplace, maybe Google Embossing Buddy. But what you can use is a dryer sheet. Um, some people say a brand new one. Some people say one that's been used. So I honestly, I don't know because I've never tried one because I don't use them dryer sheets. But I know that is something else that will work. And you just rub it across just like I did with the embossing buddy. Then we're going to use our stamp and I have the love you here. We're going to use Versamark ink, which is essentially a clear kind of sticky, slow drying ink. You can't see anything. And then we take our powder and dump it on and tap it off. And hopefully all the extra powder should just kind of fall off. So you don't, you know, want it on the outsides. Give it a tap. Give it a little blow. Um, but you should be able to get most of that powder that's not part of your image off of there. Then next we're going to go ahead and take our heat tool. Little reminder, make sure your powder is far away so you don't blow that out of your container. And turn on the heat tool. And hopefully you can still hear me, but you're gonna just kind of move it around. If you haven't used the heat tool yet today, it takes a little bit to warm it up. But once it's warm, you'll see that powder turn shiny. And it usually starts at one end and then kind of moves towards the other end. Once it's shiny, it's done. So don't keep that heat on it, move it. And because what'll happen, oh, there you can see, see the top of the L? And then it's gonna just keep moving going all the way across we'll get that U and as soon as it's done it's done because if you overdo it and you continue to put heat on it it'll actually kind of flatten it out and it won't look so good and that's all there is to heat embossing now you could trim this out punch it out whatever you want but what I'm gonna do is fussy cut it um, I know sometimes people are afraid to do this and it always looks like I'm going exactly around all the the letters, but I'm just kind of going zig, not zigzag, but um, rounding it real roughly around the outline. You know, get as close as you can without cutting it, but it's not like it's exactly perfect around each particular letter. But if you just kind of go up and down, it looks like it. So we'll bring it all the way around here in our L. And there we go. And we've got the love you. Now I think I'm going to need to get the mini dimensionals for this. So let's just flip that over. I like to use my take your pick tool when I use the mini dimensionals because I have a really hard time picking them up off the paper there. And then I can just poke them and get those pieces off like so. And then we're going to just go ahead and close up our card and just add our love you on there. So there is our Dutch door fold or double Dutch door fold. I don't know what the official name is, but it's a quick and easy fun fold. So again, I will have all of these measurements for you over on my website, links down in the video description, and you can get all the measurements, pictures of this card. And that way, if you'd like to make it with either these same products or with any other products, you'll be able to do that. If you'd like to place an order, I'd, again, I would love to be your demonstrator. And over there, I will have a list of everything I use, but also the link to order. If you have any questions, as always, reach out to me. I'm here to help you in any way that I can. So we'll be stamping again real soon. Have a stamp happy day.